<laughs> so let's talk about Scientology because I love me some Scientologists. This kind of B actor uh, named Jason Behe. You know, he's on. He's like the second guy. No on, relation uh, to Michael. No, he's been on a lot of TV shows. You can I linked to his uh, Wikipedia, and you can you can take a look at him on IMDb. But basically, you know, he, his face is out there. He's not. I wouldn't say wholly uh, unknown. So he, in 1994, he started. Uh, taking classes with the Church of Scientology. And he, over the years, worked his way up to, um, you know, he's considered to be top rank right up there with, with Tom Cruise and uh, all the other clears and, and above because there's definitely uh, stations above clear. So doesn't that mean he just paid the most money or something? Yes. Yeah, so Pretty it much. comes down to you, you've, you've forked over enough, enough cash. Right. Approximately, what, $270,000? Something like that. I don't think rate. the church like just will let you get up that high like they they check you out they you have to qualify well you go through the stages jay but each stage just costs money yeah yeah but you can't do it in a year if you threw them 10 million dollars i still don't think they'd put you to the very top in a year like they, they gotta brainwash uh, you too. yeah they would if you're you giving so? them 10 million dollars you're already brainwashed they've done their work they yeah, take why your money and that's right the two things do go hand in hand probably at one point was considered to be the face of Scientology by the guy who runs the church. He did a lot of promotional videos for the church. And then uh, seemingly out of nowhere, he snapped and publicly started speaking out against the church. Now, I think it's quite obvious that he, he had a uh, a period where he started to seriously question whether or not these promises that the church the church makes are legit, and he he brings up an example in the three minute video. Um, but the real thing is that that three minute video is actually a snippet of a three hour video that was done, and I think this is going to be one of the biggest and best exposés on the church that we're ever going to see. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. They haven't announced when they're going to do it. It's pretty serious. He hooked up with Operation Clambake, which uh, if you, the listeners don't know is a is an organization. Uh, Basically, anti-Scientology. They do a very good job. Lots of great information on their website. Zenu.net. Yeah, it's OperationClambake.net. That's next week's work. I, I have a lot of links uh, in, in my blog entry if you want to see the video and, uh, and read about some of these things. And overall, it's just out of the blue, very surprising, a um, high person in the church that's speaking out, and it just really hasn't happened this good yet. This is a good it just one. It just dawned on him that he couldn't control his salinity? I mean, is that what happened? <laughs> I don't think it just dawned on him. I think it was a slow process. You know, at one point, I think he was really head over heels for the church. I mean, there's some quotes of him out there. He, he, he drank the Kool-Aid, but somehow he pulled himself out of that tailspin. And he it's saw interesting it. because I, I do wonder with like that kind of a process, like with Scientology, where you're being told to believe in magic, you know, that, and that not only magic, but like tangible things in, in, in your life. And at, at some point, when those things are not manifest, there's got to be a, a pretty significant level of cognitive dissonance. Now, what most people would do is just go deeper, you know, down the rabbit hole when that happens, and they just go into denial and they convince themselves that that the magic is real. But it's it's interesting that occasionally somebody might say, "Wow, you know what? This there is no magic. This is not real. They, none yeah. of the things I'm not flying. You know, I'm not whatever you think you were going to be doing when you got to." when you became clear, did not come to uh, to manifest. Well, it's not just that, Steve. He mentioned in the video that they moved the goalposts. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, well, you know, now you got to do this, and now you got to do that, and that wasn't there beforehand. So mm -hmm. he, he, he realized that. He also said that uh, people that shouldn't have been having like symptoms like one of the people was having migraines, you know, he very powerfully stated that that person should not be having migraines because they're supposed to be able to, uh, you know, get rid of the engrams that would cause that. And yeah, you know, he put it together. And you know, the thing is, Steve, for the him. church, the church has dropout. Yeah, we just not people that were this high up in the church, and and um, it's gonna. It, it, I think it's very possible that this could damage the church. I really and do. And let's let's be clear, like the the church has a large amount of dropout. You don't hear from them because. The church is not a church. It's a scary ass cult. And they will sue you or they will track you down and they'll make sure you don't ever get a job again. They'll, they'll make you think you're going nuts. They'll stalk you. They'll accuse you of being a pedophile. All of these things are pretty clearly on record. They've done it to so many people in the past. If you, if you go to xenu.net, which is the address for Operation Clambake, don't, 
go to another address. It's xenu.net. They have uh, all sorts of information about Operation Snow White, just scary, scary uh, conspiracies that they come up with. Um, so, yeah, I think most people who do manage to leave Scientology, just they'd prefer to just be quiet about it and slink away in the hopes that they you know, won't get their lives trashed. They just want to go on with their lives. Right. So good for him for risking that and, and speaking up. And the that's the whole uh, impetus behind Anonymous. It's getting bigger. Um, started in January, an internet group of hackers got together and attacked a Scientology website. And from there sort of evolved into a legitimate group that's protesting Scientology and uh, encouraging other people to learn more about the cult and to take away, for instance, their nonprofit status when, in fact, they're a for-profit business. The most recent protest was April 12th, and the theme of it was Scientology's disconnection policy, which is where they encourage cult members to disconnect from family members and friends who aren't Scientologists. But the whole reason why it's called anonymous, the group that's uh, protesting, is because you have to be anonymous in order to criticize the church without fear of uh, litigation, for instance, mm. or or just their crazy Harassment, stalking yeah. techniques. Yeah, they they have a they have a term they use for people that are enemies of the church. Uh, there's suppressive persons. SPs is the <laughs> that's it. the normal term. Um, and what's great is uh, there are people who are kind of embracing that. That's uh, usually what ex-Scientologists are, are termed, suppressive persons, and they, they've started kind of embracing that. Like, yes, okay, I'm, I'm an SP. It, why, why are you so scared of me? Why don't you talk to me and find out more? That is a feature of cult in general. They cut you off from your other support structures, your family, your friends, and also anyone who would criticize the cult or your, your involvement in it. Right. That, that's SOP. And you you mentioned Scientology's nonprofit status, which they gained. I think about was that like ten or fifteen years ago in uh, the U.S. It was in ninety two, I think. Yeah, it was about like sixteen years ago in the U.S. Recently in the news was the the fact that in Texas there is a proposal to take away Scientology's tax exempt status in the state of Texas. I think that happened actually. I think it passed. So way to go, Texas. Yeah. So I hope maybe that'll be the beginning of a trend. Hopefully.